Barakata Yahweh, Barakata Yahweh Shah, Bahasham Rakakwadash, double honor to our apostles and elders, Great Millstone, peace and blessing to the elect of Israel, Shalom. People do not expect for you to rule. People do not expect for you to rule the planet Earth. And the you are you so called Negroes, Latinos, Hispanics, Native and Seminole Indians, people of Negroid and American Indian descent, make up the 12 tribes of Israel, as well as the Israelites that are scattered amongst the other nations that may look like the other nations, but they have the spirits of Israelites. If you're able to receive this truth, you are an Israelite also, no matter what you look like. Pursuant to Romans 8 and 16 and various other scriptures, all right? James 1 and 1, we're scattered amongst the other nations, so we're going to look like them, okay? But if you had a spirit, you're an Israelite. But the point is, people don't expect us to be next. They don't expect us to come into power. Because when you look at the so-called Negro, Latino, Hispanic, Native, and Seminole Indian, we are in an extremely low estate. And as far as the other nations, it appears that we are at a disadvantage. We don't have a military. Okay? We don't control anything as far as the society goes. But we had a spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. We have the word. We have the word. And pursuing to the prophecies, which is what no one else is banking on, that's how we're going to come up. Pursuing to the prophecies concerning the Israelites coming into power. But the point is, it's so beautiful. People don't expect us to rule. So it's going to hit them out of nowhere. The Lord is going to hit these people with the element of surprise. You see Israel in a lower state right now, in this low condition, everywhere on earth. But very soon, it's going to flip. It's going to flip overnight. It's going to change just like that overnight, man. Okay? This is a beautiful story, an underdog story. We're going to come up. And we're on the come up. A kingdom is emerging before everyone's eyes, man. Hidden in plain sight. All right. Let's get some scriptures. This is beautiful, man. Great and terrible times. This is second Ezra in the Apocrypha. Which the Apocrypha is a part of the Bible. Second Ezra chapter five. Let's see here. I'll begin in verse one because this is one of my favorite scriptures. Nevertheless, as concerning the tokens tokens mean signs behold the days shall come that they which dwell upon earth shall be taken in a great number meaning mass death is coming on earth and the way of truth shall be hidden there's going to be a famine of the word and the land shall be barren of faith right because people they're not going to have the answers in that time because they don't believe the truth they don't know the truth but iniquity shall be increased above that which now thou seest we're in that time now all sorts of wickedness, man. You name it. I mean, if you can think of it, it's happening. All right. It's happening. You know, I just seen a picture of this one, you know, Judite woman in the bathtub with her son. And he has his foot all on her ass. And man, this, this place got to freaking go, man. It got to go. All right. You name it, man. LGBT, uh, PQ community, you know, everything else, man. Adultery at an all-time high, all right? Pedophilia at an all-time high, you know? Man, you go on and on. Hey, iniquities increased right now. Or that thou hast heard long ago, right? Because we're in the end times. Hey, this is worse than the time of Noah, man. Which lets you know that second death is going to be by way of fire. The first death... Or the first destruction was by way of water. The worldwide flood. This second death or this second destruction is by way of nuclear missiles. Okay? Water and fire are both cleansing agents. And that shows balance, you know? The Lord is doing both. Alright? But yeah, that fire got to come. And the land that thou seest now to have root, shalt thou see wasted suddenly. 
the land of Israel. OK, but also you can apply this to America. America has root right now. America is established, you know, like Trump says, you know, the uh, power of the American military is unstoppable. You know, you don't even want to talk about the technology that America has and the uh, the military equipment. You know, he did all this boasting because America has root. But America shall be wasted suddenly by those missiles. It's going to take one hour, man, pursuant to Revelation 18. OK, and also the land of Israel is going to be destroyed, you know, because those gutter rats, those Amalekites, the chief house of Satan. All right. You know, these top Edomites, man, they're polluting our land. That land got to be cleansed. But if the most High grant thee to live, thou shalt see after the third trumpet. You know, the number three symbolizes understanding. And also it goes into completion as well. Just like the number seven. All right. That the sun shall suddenly shine again in the night. Now, the sun represents this knowledge and it also represents our kingdom. So the sun shall suddenly shine again in the night, meaning our kingdom is going to be restored in the night. The night symbolizes Esau going down. When Esau is going down, that sun is going to come up, meaning our kingdom is going to emerge. You know, going into Yahweh Shai and the holy angels returning to the planet Earth. OK, in a glorious fashion. So the kingdom is coming. You know, when Esau is going down during World War Three, our kingdom is going to come up, man. And the moon thrice in the day, the moon represents understanding. You know, and, and the uh, number three, once again, represents understanding. So this truth is going to be implemented worldwide. You know, meaning everyone is going to have to acknowledge it. And let me get a scripture on that. There's going to be a righteous dictatorship. Isaiah 30 and 25. And there shall be upon every high mountain and upon every high hill. Talking about these other gov uh, governments. Excuse me. These are the governments of the other nations. So and there shall be upon every high mountain and upon every high hill. Talking about the other nations, rivers and streams of waters. This truth in the day of the great slaughter, when the towers fall, meaning. Once World War Three is taking place fully, when it fully kicks off. And people are shooting missiles on each other, this truth is going to be expanded. It's going to be magnified, it's going to blow up. The day of the great slaughter, that's the day of the Lord, the day that America is destroyed. And also nuclear missiles are going to hit different parts of the earth. And it says when the towers fall, the towers represents Esau. He's a high and eminent man. He towers over the other nations. But he's going to fall. All right. And these rivers and streams of waters is going to be implemented. The law, statutes and commandments, you know. Everyone's going to acknowledge the, tr the uh, truth. Everyone's going to acknowledge it. Moreover, the light of the moon shall be as the light of the sun and the light of the sun shall be sevenfold as the light of seven days, meaning completion. All right. This truth is going to be completely implemented on earth. In the day that Yahweh bindeth up the breach of his people and heal up the stroke of their wound, because once he delivers his people, once he delivers the elect, those curses are going to be null and void. Those curses are going to be taken away because if you're the elect, you're going to be delivered. If you're a two third or a rebel, you're going to die, but you're going to come back. So he's going to remove the curses. But the point is. You're going to know who the real people of the Lord are for sure. Once this place goes down. Because they're going to come into power. OK. OK. This is beautiful, man. Now. Back in second Ezra chapter five. And verse five. And the blood shall drop out of the wood and the stone shall give his voice and the people shall be troubled. It's talking about nuclear destruction. OK. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 11 For the stone shall cry out of the wall And the beam out of the timber shall answer it 
talking about nuclear missiles dropping on Esau society. Okay? Knocking down these different buildings. Knocking down the infrastructure in, here in America. Okay? And different parts of the earth, but mainly America. Okay? Babylon the Great itself. And it's the point right here. So after World War Three, after America is destroyed, because America's getting destroyed when you read it in verse five here. OK. And the people shall be troubled when they see those missiles dropping. And even he shall rule. So after that takes place, after World War Three or during the midst of World War Three, you know, when it is fully you know, kicking off or kicked off, should I say, when those missiles are dropping. All right. And even he shall rule whom they look not for that dwell upon the earth. Who is the he that shall rule? The Israelites, beginning with the top Israelite, our Lord Yahweh Shah. And even he shall rule. So this is completely unexpected. And even he shall rule whom they look not for that dwell upon the earth. And the fowls shall take their flight away together. But the point is, he's going to rule whom they look not for. Whom you're not expecting. Oh, it couldn't possibly be them. And ain't no uh, Negroes, Latinos gonna rule the earth. Man, get out of here. You know, that's what people say. But that's gonna happen. All right? The Lord is all about proving his point and he's all about proving his power. Okay? Let's see here. This is 2nd Ezra chapter 13 and verse 3. And I beheld, and lo, that man waxed strong with the thousands of heaven. And when you read this in the Revised Standard Version, it says that man waxed strong with the clouds of heaven. The clouds of heaven referring to the so-called UFOs, the chariots, spaceships. All right. And we're close with that man. That man is the Messiah. He's that man. He's that dude. All right. He's not an ordinary man. He's that man. And you're going to be a joint or with him. All right. He's coming back in the chariots and we turn his countenance to look all the things trembled that were seen under him. Referring to people. All right. And every other creature on earth, but mainly, you know, human beings. Now, it tells you how the other nations are going to fight the Lord. You know, their militaries are going to fight the Lord and they're going to be beaten to nothing. Evaporated. You know, they're going to be smoked. And. I want to get a, a, a main point here. Now you read in verse 29. Behold, the days come when the Most High will begin to deliver them that are upon the earth. By way of his son, coming back in those chariots. You read about the chariots in verse 3. Okay? That's how he's going to deliver them. And he shall come to the astonishment of them that dwell on the earth. And one shall undertake to fight against another, one city against another, one place against another, one people against another, and one realm against another. So World War Three is going to take place when the Lord returns. And the time shall be when these things shall come to pass and the signs shall happen, which I showed thee before. And then shall my son be declared. And then shall my son be declared, Yahweh Shai, whom thou sawest as a man ascending. Right. But he's going to rule whom they look not for. Because you read in verse 30 here, 2nd Ezra 13 and 30, and he shall come to the astonishment of them that dwell on the earth. Now, for that word astonishment, let's get it really quick. Astonishment. It says great surprise or amazement. A cause of amazement, a marvel. Extreme surprise, amazement, cause of amazement, overpowering wonder. Right. So what him? Him? Oh, he's coming like that. You know, stupefaction. So people are not going to know what the damn think, man. All right. They're going to be puzzled, you know, starstruck and they're going to be in fear. They're going to be amazed and they're going to be in fear. It says admiration, dread, fear, you know, astonishment. It says how all the tribes of the earth shall mourn when they see the son of man coming in the clouds of heaven. They see him coming in the vehicles of the spirit world, man. You know, those chariots that are gold and silver decked out with the lights on them. You know, 
looking like precious stones in the sky, but he's a so-called Negro also, man. Like it tells you, uh, in uh, you know, Revelation 1 and 13 down to 15, that's that's his image. And you got to believe on him as the scriptures say. But he's going to astonish everyone because they're not expecting a so-called Negro to come back as the Messiah. They expect, you know, Cesare Borgia, Caesar Borgia, you know, the so-called white man, you know, to be in the sky. Why, um, you know, uh, white, you know what I'm saying? Or really red. Red, you know, having a damn toga on, you know, playing a harp, having little cupids next to him, little so-called white naked babies. They don't expect the Lord to come back how he is, man. You know, but hey, it's going to happen. And with that, I hope you were edified. Hey, people don't expect you to rule, but it's going to happen. All praise to you. How about Shimei Shalom.